Hey everybody, coming at you from my gear room. Uh, there's always been a great debate on the machete versus the axe, especially when it comes to camping, hiking, uh, backpacking, bushcraft, and survival. And then there was always, on all the forums, the survivalist forums and Bushcraft USA, there's always the, the one tool option. You know, but for me, if I carry a machete, I usually have a knife with me attached to it. And if I carry an axe, I usually have a neck knife or a belt knife. So today, what we're going to do is, is we're going to discuss and look at and think about and talk about the difference between should you carry a machete or should you carry an axe? And which is better, which will do more, which is more suited towards you, what are the capabilities of this, what are the capabilities of this. This is basically a chopping tool. That's what it was meant to be. This is basically a slashing tool. This thing's for chopping wood, tearing chunks out of wood. This is for tearing through vegetation, vines, and grass. But these you can hone change the edge and do different things with them and these the manufacturers have come out with shorter thicker versions and people have modified the standard Latin machete to do things it wasn't supposed to do so let's take a look at these two <laughs> now we're gonna go out into the field and try a few little projects with with one we're gonna do the same project with each one and try to see you know how it goes but first I'm going to talk a little bit about axes and then machetes and the different styles of them and some of the benefits of carrying them. So this is going to be very interesting. Hopefully it's going to be very interactive in the comments section. So let's uh, ease down to this end and take a look at some axes. I'm going to kind of concentrate on these four axes, but while we're on the subject of axes, the smallest of them all is considered a hatchet. All right. And I'm going to kind of leave a hatchet out of this because to me a hatchet, hatchet is, I don't know, it's in its own class, kind of like a tomahawk. So we're going to concentrate on these right here. Uh, I have here, this is what they call a pack axe. This is a marbles pack axe. This is a, these two right here are considered camp axes uh, or boys axe. Uh, pack axe, boys axe. And then this is a special class of its own. This is like a three-quarter axe. And I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. Uh, this, like I said, this is a marbles. This, I can't hardly pronounce. This is a, I think it's pronounced Hotches, Hotches Urega. It's a, a, a Basque axe. It's similar to a tomahawk because these axes, they have an eye. They're driven in with a wedge into the eye. But this has a tapered uh, handle that comes in through this side. So really, to me, when you're talking camping, hiking, bushcraft, these are all good. But when you're talking survival, to me, I would consider this as your number one survival axe. Because some of these others, if you break the handle on them, you're going to have to go through a bunch of carving and a bunch of work to get this eye, to get this thing to fit back in the hand. But with this one, I feel like if you broke the handle, you could actually take the head or you could take your knife and you could carve a handle and just drive it through from the other side because it's, it's tapered. There's, there's no eye on it. So this is a council tool, boys axe, made in America, I think North Carolina. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's those three right there. Uh, Pack axe, boys axe, or maybe camp axe. This is a very, very old, rare Woodings Verona. And this actually belonged to a retired uh, Green Beret Sergeant Major. And I was lucky enough to get a hold of this. And uh, this is about the maximum. I don't know if you'd ever want a backpack with this. But you would definitely want to carry this in a canoe or a kayak or a four-wheeler or a toboggan or a sled. Now, I've got this handle here because I want to show you the difference in the length of it. Let's go up this way a little bit. I've got them level right there. And you can see the difference right here. This would be 
This is a full size axe right here, and there's no way you would ever want to carry this. I wouldn't even carry this thing in a canoe. Uh, that's that's a little little overkill to me. So, but this thing, some people call this a three quarter axe. Uh, three quarter axe, half axe, quarter axe. Those are some of the nicknames on these things. But we're going to look further at these, uh, but these are the ones that we're going to be concentrating on. We're going to take out into the field later to uh, do a little bit of work with them and see how they compare to machetes. One other thing before we go to the, uh, to the machete side of things, uh, all these axes have a leather mask. Machetes have sheaths. These are called masks. And like, say, for example, this one here, it's all leather. That thing pops on there like that. That's just a typical mask. Now, one thing that I wanted to talk about on this one, this is a vintage Woodings Verona. Very, very old axe. And so what I did with it is instead of leather, I made a, uh, a pouch that has a liner, has a polypropylene liner. And what you do with that is you put that in. You put that over, and it protects the blade. It's a double, double... Uh, double thick polypropylene and then I have this thing and I'm not sure what kind of pouch this is it's some kind of a military pouch and because this is just an idea I want to pass along while we're talking about this stuff you know because we're talking about military survival well I mean we're talking about survival bushcraft whatever so the idea behind this was originally that when I carry this in a in an inflatable kayak or an inflatable canoe that I want the maximum amount of protection on this blade. And then I also got to thinking about this, that when I've got this double layer like this, you can, you can use some of this webbing here to strap it into your canoe or your kayak in case it turns over uh, and you lose your pack and you lose everything, you'll still have your axe and then you can have a survival kit, a mini survival kit mounted to this. Cause see, I've got two pouches here and I could mount even more stuff to this. And then this thing could be mounted to the kayak. So you'll have a kit in case you lose everything else. But that's about that. Now let's move on to the machetes. I decided these are pretty much what is known as plain machetes. You have the, the infamous Ontario with a smooth back and a D handle. That's pretty much what a machete looks like right there. It just comes in a regular sheath. This is a little bit more of a substantial heavy duty sheath. This is the Ontario with the saw back on the back of it. Then you have the famous Tramontina, which makes that Tramontina sing. Now most of these are spring steel. Some of them were made out of leaf springs in the past. Sheaths vary. This is a sheath that I made. It has a gigantic pouch on it to where you can put a survival kit or other items. Uh, this is another one made by Tramontina. But this is considered to be a bolo shape. That's bolo style because of the big bul bulge on the end. Gives you a little bit more, more weight. These are mostly for grass and vines and things. And uh, this one has a marbles sheath, which has three pouches, which is very handy. This is a condor stainless steel Latin style machete. Very good for if you're going to be on salt water in the ocean or in swamps. Comes in a very heavy leather sheath. Now these are considered kukris, but a lot of people call them machetes too. A lot of them call them a kukri machete. Some call it a kukri knife. But now these kind of start even more evening the playing field with an axe. Because these things are real long and skinny, and like I said, these are generally slashing tools. But these are really good at chopping. Now this is a traditional kukri from uh, the Himalayas. Well, no. Where is it? Nepal. Yeah, that's it. I couldn't remember. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Nepal. This is a typical kukri. You can see it's a very, very thick blade. This is a very, very beefy chopper. Now the manufacturers have played on this design and made them. This is a cold steel version of a kukri. Not quite shaped exactly like it, but it's shaped enough with a weight forward that it's a very efficient chopper. And this can, 
this can kind of hold its weight against an axe. So that's the cold steel version. This is the K-Bar Kukri. And this is what I was talking about, about a lot of times on my machetes, I'll, I'll, I'll add a knife to it. That way you've got a complete kit with you. You have a knife and a machete. And this is, uh, get that undone. This is the K-Bar version of it, the K-Bar Kukri. Excellent chopper, and it's really not that heavy. This is the Ontario Knife Company's version. Now, I've got it paired up with a knife so that it's, it's bush, bushcraft, more bushcraft black. And uh, this thing, I added an extra strap to it here because this one strap wasn't enough. The sheath's not that great, but the knife is really good. Kukri, Ontario Kukri. You can see how thick it is on the back back there. Very thick. Let's pull this out right here and look at it. There you go. Let's get them closer so you can see the difference in the thickness. See the difference in the thickness? That's what makes us such an efficient chopper. So those are kukris, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to find something to go up against the axe. And here we have yet another version of the machete, and it's my favorite version, the parang. The parang is an absolute chopping beast. And as you can see, these three here have knives attached to them. And this one in particular is a fantastic complete kit for shelter building and survival and whatever you need because I have attached a saw to it. And when you have a saw, when you have a saw, it's a silky saw, and a machete, you're, you're good to go. Now this is the parang style. I don't have a traditional parang, but you can look them up and see them. But uh, this one is a, a Han Shu Bashing stainless steel. Great for around salt water or swamps. Comes in a leather sheath. That is a chopping beast right there. This is in a leather sheath. I got it paired up with a knife. This is the Condor Village Parang. It's kind of a different style of a parang because it has the big curve on the back. But you can see it's very, very, very thick. Almost a quarter inch thick. That is a chopping beast. That holds its own against an axe. This is the Condor Bushcraft Parang, which is an absolute chopping beast itself. Has a, a convex grind. I've got it paired up with a Mora. And then this is the charade version. And I have it paired up with a charade knife. This thing's got three straps on it for getting it out. And it is parang style. This has got a hollow grind. It kind of sticks in wood, but it chops deep. So now what I've got to do is I've got to choose which machetes are going to battle which axes. Oh, i got one more classification I'm going to show you too. So I've seen a lot of arguments. I've seen a lot of arguments online about what's a machete and what's not a machete. And sometimes the manufacturers have warped that definition and sometimes people that talk about them have warped that definition. This is the Ontario SP-53. It is sold as a bolo knife. It is quarter inch thick and it's like a big knife, but a lot of people call it a machete. And just for the sake of arguments, I've always called it a machete but they sell it as a bolo knife. This is sold. This is a Tarava Scrama or Scrama. And this is technically a sax, S-E-A-X. It's a sax knife. Uh, but a lot of people call this a machete. And this is a fantastic cutting tool. This is the top of the heap. This is a this is called a machete. Some people call it a big knife, but this is made by Three River Blades. This is handmade D2 steel. This is the absolute pinnacle of chopping beast when it comes to a knife or a machete. The spine of it is a little over a quarter inch thick. Up at the very, very top, it's like three sixteenths thick, and it's a full uh, convex grind. But that is an absolute chopping beast. So. These are the things that you can carry with you when you're backpacking, surviving, and bushcrafting. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to try to figure out what to match up 
against what acts. So I'm going to put a little thought into that and then I'm going to show you my decisions and then we're going to take them out in the woods and do a project with them. So this is how I decided to pair them up. I'm going to put the Tramontina Bolo up against the little marbles and I think that's a marble 709 with an 18 inch handle because those are going to be the lightest weight options. Now we're going to step up here the Hotchas Eurega Basque Axe Let's let it go up against the Condor Village Parang because the Parang has got such a steep convex grind to it. The Basque Axe has a convex grind too, so we're going to put the two of them together and see how well they do against each other. The uh, Council Tools Boys Axe has sort of a flat grind on the end, you know, much much more flatter than a convex grind, so we're going to run it up against a kukri style. We're going to use the K-bar kukri. All right. Now for the last, the Woodings Verona that I would never backpack with, that I would only carry in a kayak or a sled or a canoe, we're going to put it up against a big giant beast of a machete that I would never backpack in, and it is the Timberline Tactical by Dave Young. And this thing, it is a beast. It is a gigantic machete. It's huge. It's got, it's got all these serrations out on this end. It's got a saw back on this end. It's got serrations up on this end. It's got like a cord cutter. This is a gigantic machete and it's based on a panga style. And it's actually pretty thick. I would never backpack with this. But I might carry it in a kayak or a canoe. So we're going to verse it up against that. And that's going to be pretty interesting right there on the chop test. That's just going to be straight up chopping if you wanted to use it for, for you know, chopping uh, firewood or something. But these others, we're going to kind of try to craft with them and do some notches and things and see how well they work. All right, so let's go out in the field. Now we're out in the woods and we're ready to start our test and our evaluation and figure out how these things work. And today I am lucky enough to have Nick, join me. No, there's nobody back here. <laughs> You're supposed to go, hey -o. Okay. hey -o. <laughs> All right, that's better. All right, now we got the mojo going. Felt like I changed it up. Yeah. Like, now, hey, there's nobody back here. <laughs> okay, we have, this is the Marbles Bolo, all right, traditional machete, and we are one pound, two ounce, and that is with the sheath. Okay, one pound, two ounce. Now, that is, that is as carried weight because it's the sheath, like if you're going to strap it to your back, I mean your belt or backpack. And I think it's 518 grams. Now the Marvel 709 is exactly two pounds. So that's darn near double the weight. But, you know, is there a benefit to that? And it's like 908 grams. So, all right. Now what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to start out with is the difference between a chopping tool and a slashing tool. Now the traditional machete not the short, stocky, thick one, is a slashing type tool for like slashing your way through through vines and brush. Alright, so, alright, nothing to it. Alright, nothing to it, right? We all know, we all agree, that is what this is made for. Well, let's take a look at this. <laughs> let's see how this does. Is this tool for this? <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. Re aiming. There you are. Now that look this this is this is so ridiculous. But let me show you something. If you have if you have need for carrying an axe, I'm gonna show you a neat little trick for clearing brush and vegetation. And the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna just hold the axe up to it and give it a hit. See? There's a vine right here. Let's say I'm going to clear that vine right there. All right. Requires some effort. You know, I could have already had that sliced with a machete. Well, <laughs> you're supposed to lay it up against it and give it a hit, okay? All right. So, that is one way of using this thing if you want to. Now, it's a very, very slow method, but if you're going to have a one tool carry option, that is something that you can do. Okay, so yeah. before we go to the other axe and machete, next thing we're going to do is we're going to see the difference between 
these two in making a tent stake. How about that? We're going to see how easy it is to, to handle that. I wonder if a machete will get a bug out of my eye. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one, okay? All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to try to make a tent stake with an axe and machete. All right, we're going to start with the, the machete. Now, generally what I do is I just give it a chop, cut one end off, and then we're going to cut the other end off. Well, it would help if the log wasn't rotten. <laughs> Let me boost this up under here. I have to find a different log. Yeah, see, all it's doing is pushing it into the log. But let's try this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. All right, I'm going to cut that to a sharp point right there like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a hard whack and then cut it down. Give it another whack and cut it down. All right, so there is your tent stake. Now, as you can see, it really didn't take that much effort. So, let's try the axe and see how the axe does. Now, I'm going to move this over. I think that might be a good spot right there. Let's try this. See how the axe does. Oh, there we go. Chopping is a no-brainer, nothing to it. So let's see now. Now I'm going to choke up on this. You really could get by with a hatchet on this. All right, that does fine on the point. Now let's see how we do on this. Oh, let's see. I lost it. I got too happy on the cutting. Oh, mosquitoes are everywhere. Yeah, I'm starting to itch all over. All right, now that's a little harder to control. That was a lot harder to control. Now, I screwed that up. So let's start over. You have to be very, very, very careful when doing this. Alright, now that. Do a little more. I had to really choke up on it. But that could pass as a tent stake. Sharp on the bottom, got a notch at the top. Alright, so. I would say that for this use, now you can drive it in. Check it out. You can drive it in very easily. I apologize if I'm missing over here. I'm uh, swatting mosquitoes like you wouldn't believe. Okay. And then this. <laughs> Not good. You're going to want to do this. All right. So, there's the test there. And I would say that when it comes... These will both do the job, but for this, it seems like the machete did a better job. The machete won out on this. This will work, but it's a little bit more work. So let's move on to the next group. All right, the next pairing is the Condor Village Parang, coming in at 2 pounds, 5 ounces. Looks like 1.56 kilograms. Now, I took the knife out of it. Normally, though, when I carry this... I have the capability of a machete and a knife, but if we're just talking about comparing a machete to an axe, I took the knife out. Therefore, I took the weight off. Now, this is the, I think it's called uh, Hotches Urega. I can't pronounce it hardly. It's the Spanish one. Uh, the, uh, I mean, Spain, the Basque axe. And that's coming in at 2 pounds, 14 ounces. So check it out. 2 pounds, 5 ounces, 2 pounds, 14 ounces. This is a much, much more uh, closer comparison of the weight. All right, so what we're going to do with this is we're going to try to make 
a pot hanger. I'm just trying to mess around and figure out what what projects can be done with these things and, and how we can make the comparison of them. Alright. So what I'm gonna do, let's see how this chops right here. Let's just chop it right here. Alright, and I say it chopped no problem. Just for the heck of it, while we're chopping, we're going to chop this. Absolutely no problem with chopping with that. Mm -hmm. So, let's see what we can do. Now, let's use a smaller one. Let's see what we can do. You take and put a chop that way and a chop this way. No, I missed it. Oh, I destroyed it. Great. That's not good. <clears throat> Alright, let's start over. Now, usually I baton these, these things. But what I'm going to do, let's try this again. Let's give it a hit. Let's give it another hit. Alright, now, see how I've got the X? Let me zoom in on that. See oh, how I've chopped yeah, the X? Yeah, you know, it. Okay. It's right in the middle of the frame. Alright, so what you want to do now is you take... I feel like I heard those coyotes again. At first, I would swear it just sounds like somebody yelling, but then when you hear, you know, like six of them, then, oh, well, that's not, that yep. can't be a group of people yelling just randomly out in the woods somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. And it turns into more of a howl. Yeah, it does. First time hearing that before. Hmm. All right, so... Let's push this down at an angle. What we're trying to achieve is a point. Alright. Get my hand away. Alright. Let's go with a little bit more. Now normally what I do is I will I will do all of this with a knife. We're, 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 like I said, we're trying to compare an axe to a machete. The thing about the parang here is I'll do fine chopping on this part because the weight forward is what gives it its strength. And see, I've made those little curls and now I can just whoop, slice them off like that. So let's see. Or your finger if you draw the machete the right way. Yeah, or your finger. Alright, so we have a pot hanger. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Oh, needs more work. More work. That's a little bit more. It's a mosquito massacre out here. I should have wore a long sleeve. That's why I wear them all the time. All right. One of them was brown in color. I've only seen that one time before. Let's try this again. All right, that pot passed the pot hanger test. Now, let's see what we can do with the bass gags. Peel that off. The bass gags. Now remember, this is the one that I said that if I was to ever call an axe a survival axe, this would be it. Because if the handle broke, you wouldn't have to worry about putting a wedge in the eye. You could just take this blade which is nicknamed a moon bit because it's curved and you could just carve out a handle and slide it through because it fits like a tomahawk. Hmm. All right, let's try this. All right, let's go. And I'm not going to choke all the way up on it like this because I can't get much of a swing. So that's a pretty good X. Let's see if we can land another X right in there. Nope. Oh, I just screwed it up. Look at that. Look at that. Just like... I think it's too sharp for that. Man, I hit it too hard. Man, that thing is way sharper than the Parang. Let's try it again, but right now, if I do it on the second try, we'll be even with the Parang. Alright, let's stop. 
and I'm going to choke up on it. Mosquito still bothering you? Yeah. That ain't good. <laughs> Spending about 10% of the time on the camera and 90% of the time slapping mosquitoes. That Some sort of little round bugs too, I don't know. Like, almost look like fleas in size, but... Biting me too. Alright. There we go. I'm just rocking that moon bit back and forth. Oh. Just cut your finger off here. Well, my hand was away from it. A knife is much better on either of these operations. I think. Have we got it? Oh. <laughs> now all that'll do is smash your finger. All right, let's see if we got it. All right. Nope. Let's keep going at it. To be such a heavy axe, well, I mean, it's not that heavy, but to have the bulk it's got, it actually chops. Gentle chopping and carving is pretty good. All right, so let's see. How's that? I'd say Yay. it passes. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one and see how that does. You right. ready? Yep. What do you think was a clear winner in that one? Uh, it really feels like the axe might be a little too sharp for doing that. It requires, Maybe. you slipped a little bit while doing it, and at first you made the mistake of hitting it too hard, driving right. too far in. Remember, I It did. went a lot smoother with a machete. It did. I think it did. This is capable. Just a little unwieldy. You know? This says 1.25 kilograms. What did I weigh it at? I weighed it at 1.33 kilograms. Mm -hmm. Maybe their scale's better than mine. <laughs> Alright, let's go get the next set. Right. This next matchup is probably the most mismatched setup of them all but I wanted to uh, I wanted to include a kukri I'm sort of a modern kukri now this is the K bar kukri one pound ten ounces 764 grams going up against two pound 14 ounces one kilogram or 1.310 kilogram all right so one pound ten ounce versus two pound fourteen ounce, basically a pound more. All right. So what we're going to do? This is going to be fire prep. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to take our cooker, and I've left the knife off the sheet. That would have been a little bit more weight. Hmm. And this one had a stainless steel knife. I'm just amazed you're capable of carrying everything out here. wasn't easy. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this. I'm going to hold this piece. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split. We're going to chop a piece, and then we're going to split it, and then we're going to try to see if we can carve with it all with one tool. All right, so we're going to cut. Oh, and as usual, the lanyard. Put it with the blade facing away from you. And pick it up, and that's how you lock it on. All right, so let's give this a chop. Hold it. Plenty capable chopper. Takes a little bit of effort. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to 
shop here, like that. Now for the splitting, what we want to do is we're going to set it. We need to get the bottom kind of flat. It's probably going to break this tree, but for the splitting, we're going to baton it. Just like that. See how this does. Looks like it's going to break the stick you're holding first. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Alright, we got it done enough where I think I can... Oh, okay, there we go. Let's see. Let's split it into three pieces. Let's see how that does. This will be the only time that I got to do this because the axe will split in a different fashion. All right, so what we want to do now is we're going to see how it carves if we want some little feathers. Now that seems like it's plenty capable. See the little shavings? Mm -hmm. You could do a whole bunch of them in pretty much no time. Alright. Alright, so there is that's the kukri. We saw how much effort that took. Let's take the axe now. Let's cut us off a piece. We know this is going to chop good. comes the hard part for the splitting. Let's get up here and see if we can split this piece. We're going to set this right here. That wind sure feels nice out here. I, yeah, it does. It, right, uh, I do that. You know, I think from a lot of rain coming again, that, yeah, it is. that part's not fun. All right. We got it partially split, it was fixing to break. So now we're going to split it from this way. This is about the safest way of splitting with an axe. Because, like, that person showed on alone that time, if you're holding and you do this, mentally, you don't have the willpower to come down as hard as you can because you may hit. So if you're holding, a lot of people will very gently hit it. And when they do, they bounce off and come down. So that's why you want to hold it down like this and hit it like that. Yeah, I wouldn't hit it anywhere at, at with any strength at all if my hand was below it. Oh, yeah, and that's what makes it bounce. So we're going to split this into thirds. All right, so we have three just like we did with the cookery. Now let's see. Still short. Let's see if this thing will carve. I swear I feel like something's crawling on my pants leg. <laughs> this is not carving as big a shavings. Of course, this ain't nowhere near as sharp as the cookery, but it is making shavings. I honestly believe the other axe, well, the last axe, might actually do pretty good. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm making them. It's just taking some effort. Now this ain't ain't really the axe's fault. 
I didn't have it as sharp as it could be. Now, I could spend some time. They don't have to be attached. I did all my carving on that stick over there. But all this was done with the axe. And you could make a pile of that. I mean, that was just, what, less than two minutes? Yeah. So, there you go on them. What would you think, Nick? Would you think sort of an even match on that sort of? Mm, yeah. If you were going to just do this, this would win because it weighs less. But if you're going to bring this, which weighs more, you have way, way, way more capabilities of firewood. Way more. All right. Well, now for the coyote test, machete or axe. We don't want that. <laughs> anyway, speaking of chopping capabilities, the last test is going to be chopping capabilities. So we got one more test. You ready for it, Nick? Sure. I can't wait. <laughs> I know you can. All right. The two that we have left are so large that, you know, if you had to, you might could do minor tasks with them. But these are the heavy hitters here. These are the choppers. Now, these are the ones that I would recommend that you would be using some sort of a conveyance of uh, canoe, kayak, uh, toboggan, sled, uh, maybe even a bicycle with a trailer. But these are the ones that are so big, I wouldn't want to backpack them in. And this is the one that the sheath, I've, in, I've included a survival kit with it so that it can be strapped into a canoe or a kayak. Now this one here, the Timberline Tactical Machete, this thing is so big, I actually have a coyote pouch that I forgot about that I could strap to the front of it, or maybe the back. And this would actually have the same survival kit capacity as that. And see, this could also have another pouch added to the back of it, so that, you know, in case your canoe turned over, and this, these were strapped to your canoe, you would still have a kit. So. If I had been paying attention beforehand, it yeah. probably would have been better for this video, yeah. that I have a Timberline Axe and the same style pouch oh yeah you do don't you i forgot about that whoops yeah another video oh yep <laughs> timberline doesn't make this anymore somebody else picked up this this is a, a dave young design by the way but this is three pounds six ounces or 1.546 kilograms this is five pounds even or 2.264 kilograms so this is roughly two pounds more than this one so let's take a look at this one. This thing has got a strap on the back here. Now what we're going to do is Nick is going to time me. Now this is a pine gut design, but this is a gigantic, huge, heavy machete. Very heavy. And what we're going to do with it is Nick is going to use a timer, and he's going to time 30 seconds, and I'm going to chop. You got a timer on your phone? Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do, and then um. this thing here is, this is the Woodings Verona Axe. And as a treat to my longtime viewers, I'm going to make the statement that this axe, this Woodings Verona axe, was, uh, I'm lucky enough to own it. It was one time owned by former Green Beret Sergeant Major Richardson. So the people that watch my videos, you now have last name. Sergeant Major Richardson, Green Beret. Uh, multiple, multiple medals of honor for valor and heroism. So anyway, this doesn't pass Morris Kohansky's. It's a little bit long. Morris Kohansky says to be a good uh, survival camp bush axe, you need to put it in your armpit and be able to cup your hand around it. A couple of inches long. But as you can see earlier in the video, it's definitely shorter than the uh, full-size axe. All right, so what we're going to do now, this is a tree. Instead of using a tree on the ground, this is still a pretty good, decent, solid tree. And uh, Nick, shine the camera right there on the roots. Oh, right here, yeah. yeah. See the root ball right there, what's going on? Yeah, the camera's stuck in it. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to cut this thing off, and then we're going to start with our chopping. So that'll be a good place for me to start editing, okay? Right. All right. Ready? And he is going to tell me to start and to stop. And what we're going to do 
is we're going to see what damage this will do in 30 seconds, and then we're going to see what damage that will do in 30 seconds. Oh, right. one thing for everybody. <clears throat> Safety glasses. Carry them with you camping, especially when you're traveling at night. They'll keep you on it. Hex Let's... armor. Oh. Hex armor makes the best cut-proof gloves on earth. They also make safety glasses. Uh, hex armor, those cut-proof gloves are good for if you're, you know, if you're five miles out in the middle of nowhere and you're playing with a machete or an axe or you're carving, it'll keep you from cutting your fingers. So, all right. We're going to do what? 30 seconds is going to do this thing. All right, you ready? All right, just 30 seconds? 30 seconds. Well, what would you think? Oh, okay. I don't know. What do you think? 40, 50? Go for it. 30's not much. I don't know, 30. I think you could probably take a good bit out of it in 30. Yeah, I think so, too. Just go for 30. Right. And it'll keep me... I wouldn't want to put spend too much time on this and get tired and then make that not benefit as well from me being tired. So let's just go with 30 seconds and see what it'll do, okay? Yep. Tell me when to go. All right. Go. Stop. All right, that's a good 30 seconds right there. Now, I will say that the handle on this thing is horrible if you don't have a, a glove. I got hit in the face with a chunk. Hot spots. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> can I borrow those? That's good, though. I really think I might have could have gone deeper if I'd have had a glove. You know, but, I mean, that's, that's not bad for 30 seconds. You know what? Covered in wood pieces. Five minutes. Oh, sorry. Five minutes you could be be through a ten inch log. All right. Now the vintage Woodings Verona. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where the axe is gonna shine. And this is a lot smoother. It's got the boiled linseed oil on it. So right. I'm about to put that it's about to put that cutesy machete to shame. <laughs> mm. <laughs> You got your timer right. ready. To be in a more of a ready position than that. How there you go. <laughs> well, I mean, I figured it would take a little bit more time to raise it up and, until we'll go down on it. And so we get a for, sort of a fair start. All right, and go. Stop. I had a feeling that the would same. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it's not exactly the same because the, the axe is wider. Longer and the head's heavier. And it's more of a chopping tool. But you're way more tired after using that. Oh, I am, yeah. But it did more. I don't know if that's much of a. I think it's a. I think it's a win for the machete. Why is that? It. The axe cut tired. more, but you're way more tired. Yeah. I don't know if you want to be doing that a lot. I don't know. Normally, big firewood for me is a bow saw item. You know what? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You got a good point. When you say the machete is a win for you, because. I wasn't winded when I was swinging the machete, but this big heavy thing here, I was swinging it. But now, it got more done, ain't no doubt about that, it won on that case. I might have could have swung a little bit lighter, you know? Hard to say. I'd rather have less energy expenditure. Yeah, that's true. Now, this leads me back to also say, uh, do you want to bring an axe or do you want to bring a machete? It depends on what you're doing. 
what your purpose is. Are you going to build a shelter? Are you going to be crafting? Uh, are you going to be cutting firewood? You know what I mean? Is it winter time? Is it summertime? Is it a temperate tropical environment where you won't need a big warming fire just a cooking fire? Is it going to be a very cold snowy place like up north where you're going to need a bunch of firewood? But, you know, chopping capabilities, 30 seconds, you can tell it did a lot more here. Took a lot bigger chunks out too. The chunks on average for the machete were somewhere in the neighborhood of that. And there's one of the chunks from the axe. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't smell like fat wood yet. It ain't been rotten long enough. That tree well, ain't rotten at all. You helped speed up the process a little bit. Yeah, maybe water will get in there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's that. Uh, I don't know. There's things I could say. There's things I could say. Still throwing chunks. Yeah, I mean, this is a capable machete. It's just very large. Uh you also, this is an axe. You can chop with it. It's sharp enough you can carve with it. You can drive stakes with it. You can smash acorns, uh, walnuts with it. This is a machete. It has serrations for carving, maybe digging into things. Serrations here. It's got a cord cutter. It's got a saw back. It's got a glass breaker here. I don't know what the glass breaker would be used for in the wilderness. But anyway, that's right. Like and it's a very sharp machete. So I guess we kind of covered everything as best as we could. There's always been an argument for it. You just have to look at these variables and think about what they weigh, how you're carrying them, what you're going to do with them. Uh, for me, still boils down to what I've always thought in the past. It depends on time of year and what I'm going to be doing, you know. Because sometimes I'll bring a bivy sack. And then sometimes I'll build a full shelter frame, put a tarp over it. If you're going to build a log cabin, I would say you're going to bring an axe for notching and a bow saw for all the sawing. Shelter building, throw a tarp over it, machete may be your better bet. Hot weather, machete. Cold weather, axe. Anything you want to add, Nick? This has left me confused between the two of them. <laughs> well, I had a feeling that it would be like there's no clear winner. Yeah, it's not you know a, what I'm saying? It's just it's hard to tell. Maybe this will put the old argument to rest on all the forums. Ooh, I actually pick your there. favorite. Is there one you think's cooler? Do you think your axe is cooler or machete's cooler? And just bring it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna close with that. <laughs> yeah, work sage advice, Nick. So hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Get out in the wilderness. Get your family out. Get off the couch. Stop watching TV. Continue watching YouTube. <laughs> we shall. See you in the next one. See you later.